Hello wonderful person and personally I love hearing stories from back home in Canada. Even if those stories involve a near death experience with a meteorite. So yeah, let's talk about the story right here that was trending in Vancouver about the meteorite that went through someone's roof and ended up on their pillow. With this picture right here pretty much explaining the whole story. But in this video we're also going to take a look at some of the historical accounts of potential meteor or asteroid explosions or strikes and also talk about what we believe in terms of statistics of how likely one is to be hit by a meteorite. And so in this story Ruth Hamilton who was sleeping in her bed was awakened by a sudden explosion with something going through the roof and then showering her with debris. When she got up and turned the lights on she found a relatively large hole in her ceiling and a 1.3 kilograms or 2.8 pounds rock positioned in the same location where she was previously just a few moments before. Although that kind of doesn't make sense because if she was awakened by the explosion then by the time she would get up the rock would take quite a while to fall. Uh, anyway, I'm not questioning her story, the story seems to be pretty genuine. As a matter of fact when the 911 checked on the nearby construction company to see if maybe the rock came from the explosion that they created the construction workers reported seeing some kind of a bright explosion in the night skies which very likely was caused by essentially an air bolide. Something that is a lot more frequent than people realize. Now the thing about air bolides is that we usually hear about them when something dramatic happens but they do happen all over the planet pretty much every single day several times a day. And because of this a lot of scientists have been wondering so statistically speaking we should actually be hearing and seeing a lot more of these near hits or unusual events where someone gets hit by a meteorite. As a matter of fact statistically we should all be seeing this at least once every 10 years. So in other words what I'm trying to say is at least one person per 10 years should hypothetically be either injured or maybe even killed by some sort of a meteorite. Yet nothing like this happens anywhere and as a matter of fact the last previous well-known case is of course the Chelyabinsk meteor and from what we know about this event is well there were thousands and thousands of minor injuries but no deaths have been reported. And before the Chelyabinsk we only have one single event from 1954 of a very very well-known case of Anne Hodges who you see right here who had an extremely interesting experience with the meteorite you see in this picture. It also went through her roof, hit her radio, bounced off the radio and then hit her in the side creating the bruise you see right here. Now this is the most well documented and the most well known case of anyone getting injured by a meteorite. And so statistically this just does not add up. Which really means only one thing. A lot of these cases, a lot of these fatalities or injuries are either not reported or potentially are attributed to something entirely different. Which means that a lot of people like Ruth Hamilton right here could be experiencing these all the time but possibly not realizing what happened or maybe just being in a situation or location where no one else actually realizes what just happened. But nevertheless there are some reports from ancient history of potential asteroid and meteorite collisions that did result in fatalities. Now we've discussed some of them on the channel before but in this video I really wanted to cover pretty much all of them that we know so far just to highlight the idea that for some reason very few of them have been reported to begin with. And so in terms of the well documented cases one of the more major ones is from 1868 in Poland. This was in a city known as Pultusk located very close to Warsaw with all of the accounts from the city reporting the same on January 30th. Essentially it was an actual meteor shower, actual rocks were falling from the skies. It all started with an extremely large ball of fire exploding right above their heads which also ended up creating a tremendously powerful shockwave. Something that's never been seen or heard of before so a lot of people had no idea what's happening. And all of this then followed by hundreds of thousands of tiny stones falling from the skies and hitting pretty much everything in their way. Yet surprisingly no actual reports of major fatalities or injuries were reported. Although the chances are injuries did happen but because this is before a sort of centralized uh, medical system most of it was treated on the spot. But around the same time, uh, specifically about 20 years later in 1888, and this was based on one of the previous videos we've talked about um, I think over a year ago, the very detailed historical records from one of the provinces in the Ottoman Empire also reported a really bright fireball 
followed by an explosion and a tremendous amount of different rocks falling from the skies. But in this case, they do report at least one fatality and one injury resulting in a paralysis. Something you can learn more about in one of the previous videos. And so, from some of the recent examples, these are the most well-documented cases with the most evidence. So, these definitely happened, because the documents seem to be very detailed. Everything else, though, is more or less either hearsay or just not really well understood. So, for example, we know that there's at least one report from 1648 from a sailboat that was traveling somewhere in modern Indonesia that seems to have experienced a collision with a relatively large rock that ended up killing two of the sailors. But some of the scientists studying this particular report also realized that the ship was traveling through a location with a lot of active volcanoes. And so here the assumption could be that maybe it was from a volcanic eruption, with the rock obviously just coming from the volcano itself. And at the same time, the report itself was only written down 20 years later after it happened, and so the factual evidence is just not really there. Then we have quite a lot of different reports from ancient China, ancient Korea, and also ancient Japan. And one of the more well-known examples from China is the event that happened in 1490. The event that happened in a city known as Qingyang. And here, numerous Chinese records indicate that approximately 10,000 people might have actually perished in this explosion. The air bullet explosion that produced a tremendous amount of tiny rocks that ended up falling across the entire city and ended up destroying pretty much everything that they hit. And here, a lot of speculation also connects this event to a comet that was also discovered in 1490. A lot of Asian astronomers reported seeing a comet in the night skies, and if this event is indeed connected to the comet, it means that the comet probably fell apart, creating a lot of debris and a lot of particles, and some of these particles made it to planet Earth. And some of these studies even imply that some of this probably connects to this other asteroid, the asteroid known as 2003 EH1 that seems to have the orbit intersecting planet Earth, as well as the meteor shower known as the Quadrantids. And so there's quite a large possibility that a lot of this was sort of connected to this one comet. Which of course means that a lot of other pieces fell onto the planet as well, but chances of them being documented or seen by someone else are relatively low. Although unfortunately that one city in China did get to experience it firsthand. But then we get more documents approximately 100 years before, in um, mid-1300s, so maybe 1321 to 1360, describing another similar collision. The actual date is unfortunately unknown, and in this case it describes an event that seems to have covered hundreds of square kilometers. Something that's somewhat similar to a typical Tunguska event. This happened in the Yunnan province in China. And although all of these reports seem to indicate quite a lot of damage and possibly a lot of fatalities, no exact details are provided and no exact date either. But one of the earliest similar reports is from the year 616, where the documents claim that a shooting star ended up creating a really large hole in the wall formation, potentially resulting in 10 fatalities of rebels living inside the camp. A lot of this comes from this book known as Book of Sui, that's essentially a historical account of the Sui dynasty, but there's also at least one paper that you can find right here, and also in the description below, that discusses some of this from a scientific perspective. And then obviously we have this other story that we've covered really recently, about the potential destruction of the ancient city that some people claim is Sodom from the Bible, that was also, maybe, destroyed by a similar event to Tunguska event. But today a lot of scientists and a lot of archaeologists still kind of are not happy with this explanation because of a lot of different things that we'll discuss in some of the future videos. Either way though, there's still a possibility that it might have happened. So we have these historical events, but not a lot of them. Yet statistically, there should be a lot more. And so some of the explanations coming from different scientists and some of the NASA scientists is that, well, we just didn't really know what they were before. In some cases, some of this major destruction could have been attributed to something entirely different, and in some cases it was just not documented or even talked about because of the sheer fear that maybe these events generated. Although I guess the bigger question is, in the last 100 years, why is it that we've only heard about these events a couple of times? Statistically, once again, we expect a lot more of these events to cause some damage somewhere. And so, at least for now, I guess that's just another mystery to add to the mystery book. But one question I was always asking myself is, well, okay, 
Knowing this, should I be maybe signing up for some sort of a meteorite damage insurance? Well, apparently I don't have to. Every insurance today comes with this as a kind of a standard. And so here, the link to Insurance Information Institute indicates that a typical insurance protects us from any falling object, including asteroids, meteorites, and satellites. And so I guess uh, if you have home insurance or if you have car insurance, for the most part, you should be okay. Which also means that as long as Ruth Hamilton was insured, her house is going to be repaired free of charge. But anyway, that's really not what this video is about. I really wanted to focus on this idea of expectations versus reality. Because here we do expect a lot of these events to happen and also just generally talk about how likely such an event is to occur and what we know about some of the historical events as well. Now today, most scientists are actually not worried about the small meteors or essentially being hit by one. They're more worried about rocks that are slightly bigger than the Chelyabinsk meteor, rocks that are very, very difficult to discover and that do have a very large chance to create an extremely explosive event above some major city. And so that's pretty much what most of the modern research focuses on. These are the rocks that are hard to find. They're also the rocks that are very explosive. And if we look at history from China and from the Middle East, it seems that it's these rocks that usually cause the damage that was then reported by various historic accounts. And even for our scientists like Stephen Hawking, this right here was always the biggest hazard. And so we know that this is something we should be studying. And so far, scientists have been doing a really good job. But unfortunately here, we're really working against the time. It's really just a matter of time before something major happens and something unfortunate occurs in regards to a major air bolide, just the right size in, unfortunately, just the right location. And so hopefully, we're going to be ready when it happens. Anyway, on that note, well, check out all of the links in the description below. And if you're Ruth Hamilton watching this, well, first of all, don't be afraid, this will never happen to you again. And second of all, well, hopefully everything else is okay. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful prison t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.